Hello and welcome once again to Victims of the Punt, our show about New South Wales horse racing. Saturday's meeting is at Royal Randwick on the lands of the Bidjigal and Gadigal people and we acknowledge them as the traditional owners and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Victims is brought to you by Australian-owned and operated bookmaker ReadyBet, the winner-finding machine that is mailbag, bag, blood, stock and punning form Australia's best racing database. Uh, there's just two of us here today. Rob Scurry, unfortunately, can't be with us this morning. He's on a uh, on school run duties, I think, so while he might be one of the better mounting our judges in racing, he's also an even better father, which is nice to see. Um, so it falls to me to sort of uh, steer the ship all on my own today, but I'll do my best. Um, and we'll have a quick recap of what we talked about last week. Uh, Mark bounced back to his best with his best bets. Galeno scored uh, very nicely in the second last race at Rose Hill last week. Uh, Mark, I think you, it was 225 when advised on Friday. Got to about 290 on Betfair Lakes. Um, I couldn't explain that drift myself. Did you ever? No, um, no. Look, the way the track was playing, it looked to me like he'd map in the first couple. Um, got that race right, but uh, certainly got the, the rosebud wrong. Uh, it was on seven act there, it was right out the back. Um, the way the track was playing, as we thought, Zuccarino and Spacewalker could probably land in the right spot if the you know if it was playing heavily towards the leaders and um yeah it was was a substandard track a lot of people are trying to so that they went slow early but this is a diabolical rose hill meeting um yeah. no because well, a punter it's bad but imagine lobbing to the races with a group horse and and you've got no chance if you're two or three wide really we just just seeing some vision here of uh, one of the beaten favorites on the program frumos which obviously attracted wow. a lot of attention um I, I thought Huey was, a, Huey was a victim of circumstances here. He tried something because of that hot lane one. He thought, I'll just sneak back and look for it and hope for the like, and he just never got it. What were your thoughts? Well, look, a couple of weeks ago, uh, it was a hot leader's day when Wicklow won, and he went back, but he came to the outside into clear air, um, yeah. uh, winning up the fence that day. So um, it, he, yeah, did he, it. He, he saw a half a run and went for it, but I think uh, he was on the best horse and he... Should have tried to chance his arm coming to the outside. Look, they hadn't loafed in the race. The two leaders had yeah. had run along four or five lengths in front of the main body of the field, so they weren't walking. They weren't going overly fast, but they weren't walking either. So, um, yes, look, I was on it. I know the track uh, pattern was against it, and I was probably up against it before the race, but I just thought she had the class to overcome it. But um, you will never know if it was going to win or not. Well, Radun has gone pretty well. I mean, had all the favours with the pattern, but it took full advantage of the pattern. I, I personally don't know if Frumos would have run it down the way the track was playing coming around, but it certainly would have run second, I think, um, if it didn't win. So certainly didn't lose all chance uh, being ridden that way, unfortunately. But um, I can see, I can personally see why he rolled the dice uh, and it just didn't pan out for him. Uh, just before we move on, thanks for bringing up the Rosebud. I was on Spacewalk and how it lost. I will <laughs> never know if I live to be 100, which is pretty unlikely. But uh, It's a, just another way, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Seeing the head-on didn't help either. But anyway. Right, we move on. This is about the, the time of the show where Rob would normally ask me what's going on at ReadyBet this week. So I'll just have to ask myself, and the answer is we've got the Friday fill-up uh, on again this week, which is a free hip promotion on one race at each, uh, each of the three racing codes today. And the one I'm most keen on at the moment is our Caulfield and Melbourne Cup Futures promo, which is running until the end of August. Basically, just have a any back any horse you like uh, in the Caulfield or Melbourne Cup uh, Futures books, and your first bet on either of those races will be matched with a bonus bet up to 50 bucks. So you just... Back your fancy in the Caulfield and Melbourne Cups, which might be something like uh, Deauville Legend after what we saw in uh, England the other night. That was an impressive win, the new cup favourite. Back whatever you like and you'll get a matched bonus bet uh, on the first bet of yours in each of those two markets. I see he's owned by Bonho, that horse, Deauville Legend. Yeah, well, the, the second name gives it away, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> or, or something legend. But, uh, um, yeah, impressive winner. Um, it's, uh, probably overshadowed on the night by that Bae, who looks like, that, but um, yeah, he's a Dave Legend now, cup favourite, and probably rightly so. I'm not sure that actually. I haven't had much of a look there, but the, the horse New London that, that beat him a couple of starts ago was it nominated for the for the cup? Do you know? Or not? I don't know. I'd have to. Um, okay. My cousin Cam's done all the work on the cups for us. Uh, he was keen on Dave Legend, actually backed it the other night, and he's on it at a bigger price for the cup too. But uh, I'll have an in depth look uh, a little bit later. Anyway, we're moving on to the uh, the Black Booker's section, which is sponsored by Mailbag Bloodstock. Um, now, again, this is where Rob would give his spiel on the featured uh, horse of the week, but it falls to me. 
the the Malbec Bloodstock have a ten percent left in their Exceed and Excel uh, filly out of Skadoodle. Exceed, of course, is the sire of uh, Bivouac, September Run, Exceedance, and plenty of other recent stars of the track. Uh, the Exceed in Costa Cross, Skadoodle being an in Costa Galago mare, accounts for over seventy percent of winners to runners. This filly's been broken in already and had one prep at the stables of Mar and Eustace. Now enjoying a well-deserved break before being prepared for her racetrack debut. Get in touch with Jono at themailbag.com.au uh, or head to themailbagbloodstock.com.au to find out more. As I said, only 10% left in this filly, so don't miss out. Right, got that out of the way. Got through it. Um, now, this is the highlight of the show for most people, I would think, the Redfern Express Black Book, and we've got two more this week from this set of trials last Friday at Rose Hill. And the first one is an unraced uh, Tavistock uh, three-year-old gelding, I think it is, from the Snowden camp called The Englishman. Yeah, look, he's one that um, you wouldn't be backing him in a 1,200-metre race, but uh, if you can find him, if he goes to a maiden at 1,400 or 1,600 metres, um, I think, uh, and even longer when the race is, uh, he gets up over 2,000, he's going to be suited there, as Mark said, he is by Tavistock. He's in the famous um, black and white check with yellow sleeves. And uh, he's uh, out the back of the field. But um, I really like the way he closed off uh, over the concluding stages here. Um, Hugh Barman rode him in a trial previously at Randwick where he got back and, and ran on quite well in the trial that uh, Perfect Thought was just nutted in uh, by Galactic Legend. I thought this uh, latest trial um, was a bit of an improvement on that again. So just well back, comes to the outside at the top of the straight uh, with Kerry McAvoy aboard there with the yellow sleeves and some very strong work over the last 200 metres or so without a lot of effort. He just gives him a little bit of a niggle along there and, as you can see, extends nicely down the outside. So um, I think he's a stayer who or a stayer of the future and, uh, as I said, watch out for him if he gets to a maiden. 1,400 first up or 16, probably be better off at the provincials to start with. Um, and uh, he's one to follow for sure. Yeah, he's just got Steyer written all over him on, on that work, hasn't he? Um, yeah, wouldn't even be surprised to see him turn up at a mile or something first. That would do with the, that sort of profile. Hope he has a little bit more luck than the other black pooper that raced in those colours a couple of weeks ago for you, Mark, but we'll, uh, we'll start that with perfect thought, obviously. We'll see what happens there. All right, from the same set of trials later on in the morning, I, uh, I had a look at this trial after Mark mentioned it yesterday. A bit of a hidden one, I thought. The Annabelle Nisham trained Eagle Nest. Yeah, this is a three-year-old filly by Shalar. She's unraced. John Moore had it originally and had a trial uh, up in Queensland and has now had a couple of trials and then was put away. And this uh, was, uh, its I think, its second trial back this time. in, or Maybe it's first. I should have looked that up, actually. But anyway, it's in uh, black and red colours. Uh, James McDonald aboard. And just smothered away down to the inside in the early part of the trial, just on the back of the speed as they come to the turn. Now, it does dive back to the inside, and I just thought uh, he had a stranglehold on this uh, filly over the last 200 metres, um, and I think she really could have troubled him um, if he'd given her a little bit more rain over the concluding stages. So had a quiet trial last time out at Warwick Farm, and this trial again just over on the inside there, as I said. Thought uh, hit the line quite nicely there, especially the last 50. No uh, action from the rider at all and still picked up some ground. So thought it was a nice trial. So out of heat eight, the Englishman, heat 13, Eagle Nest. Yeah, thanks very much for that, Mark. That, uh, look, really, just the way where that horse, that Philly Eagle Nest was in the field, it, it was a little bit of a hit and run. You, you, she was obscured by other runners in the last 100 metres or so. So, yeah, maybe not everyone's going to pick that up, but um, Mark Sheen giving it to us free of charge every week here on Victims of the Punt. All right. Uh, we'll now move on to Randwick on Saturday. Um, I'm coming to you from Melbourne where it's bright and sunny and about nine degrees, standard August in Melbourne. Um, what have we got in Sydney weather-wise, Mark? Because it's going to be pretty important today. Look, they are tipping some showers, maybe a mill or two, but uh, we've had beautiful uh, drying weather. So I think we'll end up, um, well, I think we'll start with a five and may even get to a four, I think. Forecast for tomorrow is pretty good. Um, uh, I think Ramwick will, will dry it pretty well as opposed to Canterbury on Wednesday, which, again, was pretty boggy uh, for, for Canterbury. It's uh, seen better days, but um, hopefully Ramwick uh, plays a lot better. We've got uh, Rail, where are we, in the three-metre position? What did you think there? Uh, 
I thought that, well, the last meeting in the three on similar conditions was, I don't think any leaders won. Hang on, I've, uh, I've got it right here. Just give me one sec. Yeah, offence in straight, otherwise fair, runners on got chance, a couple, oh, couple of leaders won. So, I mean, that's that's as fair as Sydney tracks get, really. If you can get a couple of leaders winning, runners on getting their chance, uh, mm-hmm. maybe a bit offence in the straight. I mean, that, I'd much rather that than a one-lane highway like last Saturday, put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got the uh, punting form meeting data up there, which um, this comprises data from the three to seven range. Uh, so it's probably not going to be as on pace in three as it is as uh, the rest of that data suggests. But um, certainly I don't, I don't expect on pace to be any disadvantage at all. Uh, we now have a quick look at the um, jockey data slide, again, from punting form. All this can be found, of course, at their website, punningform.com.au. Uh, you've got all the last hundred... Um, Stats and Randwick only stats there for all the jockeys riding at the meeting. The one that caught my eye, which I found a little unexpected, was Chad Schofield's actually striking at 14% last 100 and um, very profitable to back too. So outperforming the market, he might be just hitting his straps and flying a little bit under the radar. Right, we've got, as usual, two races to look at in a little more depth. And we'll start with race four, the SAJC Handicap, a benchmark 78. And we will have a quick look at the market to start with. We've got number two, Equation at 10, three, Bold Mac at 750, four, Opacity, 550, five, Niffler, favourite at $4. Down to number eight, Casino Kid at 550, number nine, more than number one at 10. And down to the bottom two, number 12, I've been trying at 13 and 13, 1A at 10. Mark, what have you got for us here? Um, I'm going to have something on Casino Kid again. Um... Look, he was jumping from 1,100 metres to 1,600 metres uh, at his last start and he beat Contributing Factor who had bolted in the previous week. So I just think the form around this horse is good. He's hardly ever run a bad race at 1,600 metres. Ramick is really his track. And I think Sam Clipperton rode him really well the other day. He actually got him into the race where a lot of jockeys in the past have just let him drop out and just um, been giving him too much to do. But Clipperton actually got on his bike a little bit coming to the turn got him into the race. As you can see here, he and Contributing Factor come clear to fight it out. And I think he can repeat the dose. I know he's gone up a little bit in weight, but surely he's got to be in a fitter um, state than uh, second up. Uh, he's got to be in a fitter position on Saturday third up yeah. as opposed to second up after his jumping so sharply in distance. So, um, look, he handles all surfaces. He'll still get a little bit of cut out of the track here, which he likes. Um, look, he was four weeks between runs there the other day too, as I said, going from 11 to 16. So I just think he sets up nicely. Niffler, well, look, he was given no hope the other day out the back in a slowly run race, but she looked pretty light in the yard, so I don't know if there's much improvement there. Okay. The one I am a little bit concerned about is number nine more than number one. Comes up pretty strong on my figures. Um, he got back on a dry surface last start, ran a good race at um, Eagle Farm. So if you're looking for a saver, maybe him, but uh, I'm going to back eight and cut out on nine. Interesting, interesting uh, remarks there, particularly about Niffler. I thought because it had had a break before its last start, maybe it's, uh, it might be the one with some improvement in the race, but if um, if she paraded light there and that's about her, then maybe not. She does look like getting a very nice run with McDonald's on, I will say. And this is a funny little race. There's a couple of horses in this market I really wouldn't want to back. I know Opacity was very good against the pattern last start, but he's won one of his last 20, I think it's... He's not a good betting proposition, generally speaking. And yeah, you've got things like Bold, Bold Mac and 1A, who went at Forbes, you know, under under 10 to 1. It's um, it's a very winnable race. Casino Kids in great form and uh, looks a pretty solid bet at around 550. The, th- thing, the thing about Niffler, look, she doesn't carry much condition, but um, look, she's had a couple of runs and they tried to freshen her up. Mm. Pat was against her the other day, but oh, I, I just, you know, she didn't parade fantastic before the race. So yeah. I just don't know if there's any upside there with her. And she's been a pretty costly horse for punish. She's been beaten favourite a few times now too, or favourite or second favourite. More than number one, very interesting runner. Could certainly win this at, this at his best, so big watch on him. All right, thanks very much for that. We move over to one of the features on the program. It's race seven, the toy show quality for the uh, Pillies and Mares over 1,100 metres. And the market uh, looks like this. We've got number two, Bellucci Babe at seven, three for Turs at nine, four, Volpine 13, five, Jamea 550. Down to number nine, the Queenslander Boom Nova at 550. Number 10, the favourite, Zapateo at 360. 
11 Sky Command is 10, and 13 Smyrnova is 11. Uh, Mark, you found Smyrnova the day it was a late scratching behind Mautai, but you've gone another way this time. Who have you found? Yeah, I think this is a little bit stronger race. Um, probably not as well uh, placed here with the weight situation. Uh, I'm with um, Zapateo. Now, we've got a trial from Kimberley here, and I think this is the trial uh, for the race because Jamea is in this trial as well and trialled up really well. But Zapateo leads in the blue colours, led out about three and four wide. Jamea's in white colours back in the field. He comes to the outside. Berry just gives her a little bit of a niggle up um, for a stride or two, and then she picks up and then he drops his hands again. But Zapateo was under a strong hold all the way to the post. Now, the thing about her, first up last time in, she ran second in Mizzou, coming off about a 23-week spell, and she looked well above herself. Um, she comes here off a shorter spell. I think she's trial better going into this, and she'll get a perfect run here. She's drawn barrier number four, and she'll land just on the back of the speed here. I would expect Sky Command uh, to roll forward. Boom Nova probably goes forward as well. Lost a bit of speed with Bella Nipotina, but at the very worst, I think she'll settle in the first three. I think she'll be poised to win, and uh, I think Jamea will be the one coming at her late. So the other two I think will fight it out, but I'm with Zapateo. No weight on her back. She's good at 1,100 metres, and I think she sets up nicely. Ran really fast sectionals in that trial at Kimber. Excellent. Thanks very much for that, Mark. Yeah, she does look very nicely placed in this. Um, probably not the strongest race of this grade you'd ever see, but, uh, look, she's a progressive one, uh, well-weighted under the conditions too, and... Looks a deserving favourite. Now, we probably shouldn't let this meeting go without uh, touching on the feature race at the Winx Stakes. A um, few big guns here kicking off their preps. Obviously, the yard's going to be all important here, but did you have any um, early thoughts on it, Mark? Well, I think it's a trap race because there's no speed in the race. Forbidden Love looks like walking in front. Um, it'll be interesting what McDonald does on Enemo here because he's actually pinned the lids at uh, both his trials this time in and been in the first couple, and he's drawn barrier number one here. But I think the yard with Rob is so important because he has sweated up in both trials. Um, he's an athletic horse who doesn't normally carry a lot of condition, but uh, you wouldn't like to see him break out before the race for sure if you're taking the shorts. But um, just from that alley, he should just land on the back of Forbidden Love, shouldn't he? If, uh, if they want to press the button early, he just lobs into the right spot. I'm not sure I could take the price, though. Uh, look, I was going to have something on Fangirl. I thought she's tried brilliantly, but... Just the muddling pace has got me really concerned. Yeah, I thought one that might might have a chance, and I wouldn't normally have said this, is hinged. I think with I think Nash might just throw a bit of initiative out from the wide gate and put it in the race outside, forbidden yeah. um, love. And, you know, she's not a bad Philip or me now on her day. I think she could run a race and this would be a chance to get under the guard of some of the bigger guns. Uh, uh, I don't think she's... Top class, but I think she might just run a race, maybe an each way chance more than a win. Uh, win hope for mine, yeah. Very interesting with Adam. You don't think she's a heavy tracker, or no? She's run a couple of good races on dry surfaces. Um, certainly, very best on heavy, I would say. But um, I just think that, as you said, this speed profile's got me flummoxed. So she might just end up in a good spot and and stick on for a place, I think. The best uh, rider will probably win the race. It could well be, yeah. It, look, Anime might be too good for them. It, it might just pan out perfectly for him. I, I can't get my head around a suit price of 240 to be honest, but he's got clearly got other targets and he's going to be peaking later on. But he might be too good. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him. Re really interesting, right? Look, Halal looked very fat first up uh, and he missed the start, so he could be an improver. Yeah. And Profondo's had th three trials and has really hit the line strongly uh, Look, if you didn't know the horses, he he went half pace behind Animo in the trial. So yeah, yeah, and he did have two runs on wet tracks last time in. He went to Melbourne at a mile first up on a slow, and then struck a heavy track, rebolted in front in the guinea. So I know his form looks a bit thin from his early three year old season, but uh, he does look to trial well. Uh, Abdullah takes over. He's another one who can take up a position. Moanga, of course. Uh, is a as a class horse, but um, where will he get to from barrier number two if they walk? They went really uh, well, they had reasonable pace in that winks last year, and he got him into a good position to swoop on them. But if he's buried back on the fence, what happens there? Yeah, I, I, I think unlike Animo, he's going to struggle to take uh, full advantage of the low draw. Uh, he, he did run second at fourteen hundred in Melbourne first up last prep. He's got some first up form is okay, but again, he's another one that just might not be suited by it. It's it, look, you're right. It is an intriguing race, but um, 
I don't think it's a race I'm going to um, really be loading the cannons on punt-wise, but it's uh, a race I think we'll probably learn a bit from. Anyway, that brings us to the end. Thanks very much, Mark, for your uh, your tips and your trial back bookers. Very uh, useful as always, I'm sure. And uh, we'll be back again next week, hopefully with Rob. But uh, for today, thanks very much, Mark. Thank you, Mark.